I am going to explain how atmospheric circulation affects ocean circulation. In other words, how wind moves surface currents and gyres. Wind is an effect on, of uneven distribution of heat on Earth. This is the equator at zero degrees latitude, and here is the North Pole. 90 degrees north, south pole, 90 degrees south. The equator gets more solar radiation than the poles do. So Earth tries to even itself out by moving air from cold areas to warm areas. Air always travels from high pressure to low pressure. Think of it as I have too much, you don't have enough, I'm going to give you some of that high pressure. So convection currents are a result of warm low pressure air rising as it expands, cooling, becoming denser, and sinking. So this is cold air, warm air. So air circulates in these cells that we call convection currents. Earth has three cells in the northern hemisphere and a mirror image on the southern hemisphere because the air cools too quickly to reach the poles, creating these low pressure areas here and here. And there are high pressure areas here and here. Air will therefore travel from high pressure to low pressure like this. The reason the wind does not simply move in these directions is because as Earth spins, parts of Earth travel faster than others. The equator has a larger diameter around than the poles do. So it's a bigger circle if you slice Earth into little, little circles. The equator has a lar larger diameter than the pole, so as Earth spins, the equator has to travel faster than the poles do to make it around a 360 degree rotation in 24 hours. This is known as the Coriolis effect. Think of an old school playground merry-go-round merry in which your friend is here and you are standing in the middle. He has to travel faster than you do to make a full revolution around the merry-go-round than you do. If you throw a ball at your friend, it might look like it's going in a straight line, but it veers to the right of its intended path because your friend has already moved by the time the ball reaches him. So as Earth spins, the wind traveling from a high pressure to low pressure area veers to the right of its intended path on the northern hemisphere and to the left of its intended path in the southern hemisphere. This pushes water to move in a similar way, getting pushed to the right of its intended path in the northern hemisphere hemisphere and left on the south. So what you end up with are winds traveling to the left here 
One's traveling to the right here. One's traveling to the left here. These are called westerlies. These ones down here going to the southwest are called trade winds. And these ones up here going to the southwest are called polar easterlies. Winds are named in the direction they're coming from, not going to. And we live over here where the westerlies pass from the southwest towards the northeast. This pushes the water to move in a similar way. Getting pushed to the right of its intended path in the north and left on the south. Look at this image of ocean currents, ocean surface currents. The top layer of the ocean, the top 10% of the water, gets pushed in one direction. These are called currents. Look at the currents in each hemisphere. Four currents circulate in a closed loop, as you can see here, called a gyre. These move in a clockwise manner in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise manner in the south. They're mirror images of each other. There are five major ocean gyres, one in the North Atlantic, one in the South Atlantic, one in the North Pacific, one in the South Pacific, and the Indian Ocean. Look at the currents on the west coast of continents, right, like this one right here. These are eastern boundary currents as they are in the eastern side of the ocean basin. If we're looking at the ocean basins, the eastern sides are cold water currents, like the California current here that originates in the Arctic. And the western boundary currents are warm water currents, like the Gulf Stream that originates in the Gulf of Mexico here. Western boundary currents, like the Gulf Stream, carry a lot of water, are wide, shallow, and fast currents. Eastern boundary currents are the opposite, cold, narrow, deep, and slow currents. Think of Finding Nemo, the baby turtles ride the EAC, or Eastern Australian Current, over here. A warm ocean current so that they can stay safe from predators and breathe air that they need. Warm air sits above cold air as it is less dense. If you look at this map, you can see that Europe is closer to the North Pole than we are. It should be colder there, but Portugal and Spain are nice and warm because the Gulf Stream sends nice warm water in that direction. If you compare San Francisco to DC, which are about the same latitude, San Francisco is cool or cold based on your perspective, about 55 degrees Fahrenheit all year long. But DC sees extreme temperatures differences between winter and summer. We have four seasons. The famous the famous quote by Mark Twain states, the coldest winter I ever spent was summer in San Francisco. This is because we have the westerlies that travel from west to east throughout the United States. San Francisco has cold air moving from the cold California current west to east. While D.C. has extremes based on temperatures of the land over the whole United States. As you can see, the ocean plays a third of the role of climate. Ocean currents impact climate in coastal areas such as Portugal and San Francisco. There was a time a few hundred years ago when the glaciers of North America right around here melted, feeding cold, fresh water into the ocean, halting the path of the Gulf Stream to
to Europe, and Europe saw a little ice age. This is what climate oceanographers fear may happen again with rising global temperatures. A large portion of Earth's glaciers are located here in Greenland, near the North Pole. The Arctic is seen the most warming and glaciers are melting here. This may interrupt the Gulf Stream path again, and Europe could get cold.